You know, I've heard Dante's Cove described so many different ways. Dante's Cove is a soap opera. With fun, sexy characters. Dark shadows meet. Off of the Vampire Slayer meets. Charmed. Melrose Place meets the L word. Where it spoke. Oh my god, yes. Be co marker. Oh, you know, it's so many different things. It's a little nuts around here. We're seeing naked men. Very titillating. Campy. It's supernatural. It's naughty. Sexy. The storyline here is basically not everything's what it seems. You know, I remember the time when only the very best families came here. The Hotel Dante was known throughout the continent. Now look at her. Reduced to a boarding house for penniless bohemians. She is pretty. Where are my manners? Grace Neville. I sort of view Grace as the eye of the storm. She's sort of at the center of of the Category 5 winds that are about to blow. But now you live, but this is far from over. So she's one of those people that is just single-mindedly, clinically obsessed with, with what she sees as her destiny. And, and woe be to whoever gets in her way. No one comes between me and my destiny. You know, she may have started out as a good kid, but, you know, she has this mother who's a witch who tells her, uh, oh, excuse me, I got to go kill your father. That's, that's part of our, de our deal. And, um, and then she learns that the love of her life, she, when she marries him, she'll have to kill him. But luckily for her, she doesn't get that far because she catches him with another man, so they never get married. And that's just the beginning of, of, of the hurricane. I mean, of the hurricane that lasts for 165 years. Prepare to meet the true powers of treason. I very much enjoy doing period and costume work. Um, I've done a lot of theater, and um, except I, I made the mistake last year of during my fitting, I had her, I, I was looking in the mirror and I'm like, no, no, make it tighter. And so she's like, you know, Miss Scarlet with her foot on my back. And I kind of forgot that I was gonna be in it for 14 hours. <laughs> so that was, vanity will always trip you up. Grace is particularly fun for me because I'm not a diva myself or anything, but, um, oh. Not very many actors that you have the opportunity to work with can just kind of embody a character the way that she does. And she's really taking Grace to a level that I don't think many actresses could touch. Who are you? Ambrosius Valen. Ambrosius is a young man born in the 1800s who basically has some issues. You have no idea how dangerous I can be. He is a tortured soul. And I think that Ambrosius is a good guy with bad intentions. Could be reverse. Could be <laughs> a bad guy with good intentions. Depends on how you want to break him down and how you want to look at him. Like it or not, I'm the only one that will ever know you, ever suit you. <laughs> The relationship that Ambrosius has with Grace is, uh, I would say, definitely pure hatred. You have interfered with my life for the last time, Grace. At one point in their lives, Ambrosius tries to trick Grace into thinking that he's this straight man who is ready to become a husband, um, a loving father, but both Grace and Ambrosius have their own agendas. And she's the one who puts the eternal curse on Ambrosius and kind of screws his life permanently. So there's really no lost love between the two of them. You are impotent. Too impotent even to lure that idiotic whelp Kevin into your bedroom and make him love. Would you like to see what I've learned? Not today, dear. What I like about their relationship on screen is that people always say that the opposite of love is hate. It's not. The opposite of love is indifference, and we are far from indifferent toward each other. Adam is a rich, spoiled kid. He's kind of a prick to everybody else, you know. He's kind of got his own little attitude. He's kind of got a jock. Um, thinks he's kind of a little bit better than everybody. Buzzkill, that's you. So a lot of people think he's got the, he's got the life, but really, you know, he uses drugs to escape his life, and he's, he's got feelings for someone, but he doesn't want to come out.
Why is everybody looking so serious? Adam, we're worried about you. I can take care of myself. We want to help. Like you care about me. Adam, he just sees in love with Toby and, you know, loves universally. Just fell in love with him. That's it's just him. That's who he is. You know, who knows you like I do? We have history. We've been playing this game since high school. You were a total asshole to me in high school. That wasn't the act. You knew that. You stuck with me this long. Wait for me to sort this all out. Don't give up on me now. I absolutely love, love, love working with Johnny, our new Adam. He's fantastic. I don't mind that he doesn't wear a shirt a lot of the time. I think it's OK. I mean, it's hot here. You know, we're shooting in Hawaii. And I think it's a big part of his character, you know, to not wear a shirt. Hey, Adam. I think in, in many ways, Toby is the, the voice of reason at Dante's Cove. He's um, a very dedicated partner to his boyfriend, Kevin. You know, coming from, from last season when they first arrived at Dante's Cove and all this crazy supernatural stuff starts to happen, uh, at first, you know, he's very scared and he goes to his best friend, Van, for, for some assistance in that. And this season, I think he's getting used to it. It's like, okay, this is where we live. We're in Dante's Cove. It's a little nuts around here. There's ghost children and warlocks and witches. And, you know, so it's more coming to terms with what the reality of, uh, you know, living here is like. I love his character, his kindness. He's truly the voice of reason. I mean, he's the voice of reason without the, without the magic going on. He's got the magic in his heart. He doesn't, he doesn't need any, any, Stardust. He, he's just got it all. If I were just watching the show on television, he's someone that I'd go, wow, I'd like, to, I'd, like to, I'd like to meet him. I feel very lucky in this show to, to be able to portray some really interesting and dynamic different relationships with Kevin as a partner, with Van as a best friend, a lesbian best friend, and in many ways, partner in crime in a way. Every day you get to know Charlie, he just gets more beautiful and more beautiful, which I didn't think would be possible because, I don't know, he's just really, really kind and adorably cute and just like always there with a positive word and he's soft and not intrusive at all. He's, I don't know, I just really like his whole essence. I like being around him, it's very comforting. So, offset, you'll see me running to him and hugging him all the time, just <laughs> for good vibes. What do you think, about another two minutes? Yeah. With Adam, it's this amazingly kind of intense friendship that has a history. It goes back to, to high school with the two of us, and now we've both found ourselves at Dante's Cove, and it's a push and pull relationship, <laughs> um, if you know what I mean. I've always known. I miss my old friend. I miss the old Adam. Oh, come on. You never want to hang out with me anymore. You're not since Kevin showed up. Adam kind of comes to a resolve about what he wants, and I'm very excited for that storyline to, to continue, you know, to find out about their history a little bit more. And who knows, you know, he could be the straw that breaks the camel's back next season if Kevin keeps cheating on me. No hard feelings. Well, of course, Kevin is in love with Toby. But then we have Ambrosius. Kevin's like, hmm, what's going on with that guy over there? I don't know, I'm gonna go find out. Kevin, there's a point where if you don't fix something, it's broken forever. I made my choice. Now you gotta make yours. Look, I'm here with my boyfriend. Oh? Where is he? I'm Michelle, Van's girlfriend. Michelle comes from Iowa. She's a good girl, she believes in God, she's a decent person, comes from a good family. But like most people who leave the town where they grew up, she has an adventurous nature. Misha, you're a lesbian living on an exotic island who snorkels in the nude. Do you think folks back home call that conventional? Yeah, but that's natural. God made our bodies. Why should we be ashamed for people to see them? The way that I look at Van and Michelle is 
I feel that Michelle is the yin to Van's yang. They complement each other. They have different interests. Michelle's a little bit lighter, Van's a little darker, but they work well together because they're different. And they, those differences bring them together, but ultimately pull them apart as well. Michelle, I'm not going anywhere. Van, I care about you. And I don't want to see you torn apart by whatever it is that's causing all this confusion. But I'm not confused. Going through the emotions that a character has to live in, that's to me what being an actor is. And I think that if you don't allow yourself to fully get into the darkest places that you have to go, you're not living as that character. And not only are you selling yourself short, you're selling the audience short too. What's it gonna take to get a commitment from you? Come here. Okay, don't try to change the subject. Here. I'm serious, uh -huh. fan. <laughs> You're not gonna get out of it. <laughs> You're so cute. Because Michelle is this person that's there for Van. She kind of, she kind of has this like delusional belief that Van's gonna come through for her and that Van will someday see like she loves me just as much and we're gonna be together, committed to each other. And Van is just like, I don't know what I want. I had sex with this girl at this party. I'm not going to Iowa with you. She knows that she, there's some kind of connection there, but she thinks Van's gonna come through for her and Van's kind of like, well, I'm gonna do my thing. Michelle. No. No. Being like the solo artist that she is, when all this crazy stuff started happening in the first season, she kind of didn't know where it was coming from, but at the same time, she already knew because she had painted it or she'd seen it in a dream. And the next season, she expands her horizons to find out she is really ingrained in the plot and she's part of it. You have to keep an open mind. Not only does is there a purpose Repel like for her Repel knowing the history and connecting with all of the dark sides, power. but there's there's a battle going on between good and evil and it finally evolves to see that Van's a part of it and that she's has a path to like find which way she wants to go. She's kind of like all over the place with learning this magic. You're not thinking of using magic against Ambrosius? What else is there? No, we'll see what happens with Van. She's an iffy character right now. You have so much to learn. Nothing is ever that simple. Not magic, not life. There's always a price. You gotta be careful down there, Michelle. Just tell me if you're not up for it, okay? I just didn't want to cancel. You know, you can spend time with me without taking a scuba lesson character of Brit, um, it's actually a really fun part to be playing. She, she's cool, she's a, she's a bartender, and she's a scuba instructor. She's, you know, multitasking there. And she's she gets to come between Van and Michelle. Brit comes in between the two of them. I don't know who you are, but Michelle doesn't want you here, so get lost. I don't want to hurt you. It's a sexy, um, juicy kind of role. There's some hot, steamy lovemaking going on, some good sex, so. It's the kind of part that's just, that's, that's fun to play. You'll never be Michelle's type, not in a million years. I would know I've been there. I'm an out actor and I want to be out there being able to contribute to the community. It's time. It's a time right now that, that people I think are ready for it. Um, there's a lot of out gay lesbian actors who um, want to be doing gay stuff. I don't know that I ever made the decision to come out. I think for me to try and, and not be out would be silly. Someone would out me in a second anyway. What are you up to? I'm just trying to help. We've added another new character this year, Diana, who's my sister. She's really the baby sister I never wanted. You should be dead. Nice to see you too, Grace. My character, Diana, um, she is uh, an old, old soul witch with uh, uh, a lot of good in her and um, a lot of strength in her. And she's come back to Dante's Cove to um, avenge her father. And there's a whole history to how her father was, uh, you know, unjustly killed and um, uh, taken away from this earth. And uh, she's uh, come back to save him. And uh, this, you know, uh, is a, a 
great acting uh, opportunity because I've never I've never been able to play uh, I've never played a witch before I've never played a, a, a supernatural character before and there's a great wow there are so many you know there are so many you know so so many choices I can make with my character it's it's actually uh, it's actually fun no French maids uniform it's not exactly my style Diana she's attracted to her but at first she was her adversary. Why don't you draw me? I do better with subjects I'm interested in, so. Fair enough. Am I more interested now? Girls gotta eat. <laughs> Sam Riven directed the first season and he's directing the second season and I, I know I speak for the entire cast when I say thank you. I mean, he, he's amazing to work with. You'll also come in to ride around here. I love working with Sam Irvin. I think that he, as a director, he has an eye for setting the stage for the actors to really live in that moment. Let's try, let's try fast and see how it goes. He's a genius. Because how do you manage a zoo, you know, and make them all fall in line, you know, and make them look pretty? Take it from, the, from him saying fresh meat. Here we go. He comes up with great ideas, but he also gives you the freedom to kind of develop your own mannerisms, develop your own character. And that helps a lot. I feel free. You don't feel like you're contained on set, you know. You get your script, you know, you got to say your lines, but he lets you play. He doesn't, you know, like make me uncomfortable at any point in time where I don't feel like I can't do something for him. I feel like I can always pull through for him because he's very positive and is like, he's a very good director. If we need a suggestion about how to fight a warlock, Sam is there. He's the man. Action! Um, this season, last season we shot on Turks and Caicos. This season we're on the north shore of Hawaii. Still, I've been here, it's been about three weeks, and it's still, I look outside my hotel room and I see the beach and the pool, and it's, I mean, compared to working on some sound, sound stage in LA, this is, it still doesn't feel like work. When I saw my view from the, from my room, the bellboy brought me up, I started screaming, and he's like, are you okay? I was like, I'm on the ocean, I'm on the ocean. <laughs> You're gonna be stuck, you know, in Hawaii, of all horrible places to be stuck, with a group of people, I couldn't have picked a greater cast. Actually, it's been hell working with her. <laughs> Get uh, out of my shot. Get out of my shot. Everyone in the cast gets along so great and you know, made friends for life. And when we're not shooting, we're hanging out. We are going to meet our fate. We all took a big surfing lesson together. And, um, you know, I try to, try to strut my stuff. I'm not that great, but. We had a blast. I mean, really, you know, it, I don't know any other cast that has such a synergy as we do. And I think that's so important um, because that plays on screen. My feelings about gay television were, were in the top two reasons to do, to do this show. I mean, I really admire what your television is doing. For so long, I think the gay and lesbian community has been shunned has been whatever as far as primetime television goes queer as folk was groundbreaking and that is fantastic and i think that what here is trying to do and trying to accomplish is a very exciting thing to be a part of anyone that's um grown up gay or had that had to you know come to terms with that as far as you know confronting their family confronting their friends you know they can see that in the show they can relate to it you know there's people that have been open at an early age and there's people that's continue to hide it so i think everyone can kind of see themselves in every character, it's not just, I mean, sure, there's different movies and stuff, it's not just the stereotypical, you know, out of the closet, everything's okay. There's, you know, it's real people with real problems. And it's just important to tell everyone's story, you know. Having channels like Here TV and shows like this are helping us become more comfortable with it. There will always be those people that are, are they rather repress their sexuality. They rather, you know, say, you're going to go to hell for doing this. There will always be those people. Fine, if it, wor if it works for them, fine. But what about us? What about the people like me that we love our sexuality? We have been born this way and we can celebrate it. We can enjoy it and we're very proud of it. It's been a long time coming for, for a voice, 
like this, and I'm so happy that it's finally happening and that I'm a part of it. And um, you know, it's going to be just the beginning of things to come.